Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, it is Friday. It looks like we made it. I hope everybody's having a beautiful day. I hope the sun is shining. I hope the birds are singing. I hope the wind. Whew, is that your back? Amen. I love that Amen. energy. <laughs> I, I'm so stoked to be here, man. And for everybody listening, I don't know if you're listening to the podcast or if you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble or Twitch or Twitter, but wherever you are, if you're on LinkedIn, whatever, let me just go ahead and welcome everyone to a truly transformational episode. Today, we have the honor of diving into the boundless realms of innovation and consciousness with none other, none other than Dr. Vijak Haddad. As a transformational guide and innovator, his journey is a testament to the power of interdisciplinary exploration and visionary thinking with an impressive background spanning an MBA, a PhD. His expertise extends far beyond conventional boundaries. At Centrigal, nestled in the vibrant landscape of Kingston University, London area, he orchestrates a symphony of ideas that transcend the ordinary. His interests ranging from archetypal cosmology to artificial intelligence and regenerative ecosystems paint a portrait of a mind unbound by traditional constraints. Dr. Daddy's superpowers are, I think, awe-inspiring as they are diverse. From crafting win-win deals to envisioning radical growth, his abilities transcend the mundane, shaping the future of human potential and multi-stakeholder synergy. As an architect of innovation labs, activist energies, and venture building, he his impact reverberates across industries from Ecotech to Martech and beyond. Dr. V, thanks for being here today. How are you? Amazing. Thank you, George. This introduction was just like next level. And I'm I was like, you okay. <laughs> yeah. I was just saying, like, that's, you know, some cool dude. <laughs> okay. You're just like, okay. That's nice. To, I'll take that too. <laughs> okay. Good. Oh, our friend, our, my friend Ben says, no one blows sunshine like you, George. You're right, Ben. You're right, Ben. I love you, man. We got to talk about this guy's my, my friend, Dr. V, this guy, Ben, that's just talking to us right now. He's got this really cool new book that's called um, No Absolutes. And he's writing the second part. Mind blowing, man. And uh, I wanted to bring him up. I think it's a great segue into, you know, just, just the world we're living in today. And you have this great quote that really attracted me to you. And I want to share it with you in the audience right here. And it says, if you were interested in technology to further the well-being of the planet and sentient life on Earth, get a hold of me. That's a beautiful quote, man. Maybe you can unpack that for us. Sure. Oh, well, you see, that is just comes a little. It connects with what we were doing in the in the warm up before, right. when we were talking about progress and technology, you know, and the malaise of 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 modern humanity that we have, which is to kind of blindly embrace progress and technology for its own sake right because we always need the next new thing the next better more powerful more the faster thing and so on and it's it's ingrained into our systems and to our psychology as well but but that being the case we overlook way too often or have overlooked for far too often the you know the holistic impact of of innovation of technology what what for technology for what right for innovation for what what for it's almost like you know there is this this uh this um, you know this belief that innovation is always good right no matter what it is and that that culminated in this in this cult of disruptive innovation which you know disruptive innovation was huge for for many years you know i was doing uh, working with ventures and large organizations, doing digital transformation, digital innovation campaigns in in different continents, mostly in North America and the UK, but a couple you know a couple of other places too. And uh, you know, for years, it was always the disruptive innovation. Just we're the next disruptors, the next disruptive, and and it became almost this thing like disruptive innovation is is always good. You know, it's always good to to disrupt whatever is there and change it and bring some new some new innovation, right? And, and that's not, okay, look, I need to unpack this. It's not, you know, it's great to be innovative, right. but I always had an issue with that, with that kind of blind blanket, uh, you know, uh, uh, backing of any disruption is good, right? I was like, what, why do you want to, dis for instance, do you want to disrupt the, the, uh, the, the model of love that we have? It's pretty traditional. Do you want to disrupt yeah. that? No, I don't want to disrupt that. Do you want to disrupt the family, right? I don't want to disrupt the family. There's beautiful. I'm okay with advancing the family model, yeah. making it more, you know, evolving it, but I don't want to disrupt it. I don't want to like 
it to disappear. I don't want it to to go away, right? So yeah. there is there is what I'm getting at. There's a lot of good as well, and there's a lot of um, beauty in in the traditions, in spiritual traditions specifically, which uh, we can't just uh, discard in in, the, in favor of 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 any type of technological innovation whatsoever. What we need to do is we need to marry or bring together, in my mind, the the powers of you know. Okay, because you know it's also not the case that we should now reject innovation. We should just say like people is the fundamentalists for all of all stripes and colors that exist of people who say, okay, I'm going to do a counter reaction. I will embrace tradition. I will embrace even ecology. You know, just just be like a fundamentalist of this and reject any type of progress. That's that's not good neither. Right? That's not going to help right. us. So what we need to do is, and this goes back to, it's a long way of getting back to. Yeah, the, it's perfect, quote, man. It's perfect. The quote that you asked me about, it's, it, this is my philosophy. How can we, how can we marry innovation, technological innovation with all of the exponential technologies that are emerging? How can we marry that authentically with the wisdom traditions, with, with mm -hmm. everything that's good in the, in the spiritual wisdom traditions of humanity in, in, in learning about, about spiritual growth and learning about working with inner work with consciousness and and the all the other kind of wealth of resources yeah. that we have in the wisdom tradition i think that's a great challenge if we can if we can if we can somehow you know if we can find a way to bring these together we can solve a lot of the problems that we have right now on the planet if not all of them yeah it makes it makes sense and when i when you explain it like that it doesn't take a whole lot of imagination or it doesn't take any imagination at all. All I have to do is look out the window and you see the fighting that's happening. And it is this old versus young tradition versus progress. And you're right. Like where did we turn the corner and, and the idea of disrupting everything is good. Like disrupting seems to be a great way to make money, but that's not necessarily good either, man. Like this idea of disruption, like just think about that word disruption. It's a problem. I'm not saying it's bad, but it just sounds to me like disruption for for the act of disrupting alone is a problem. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's this strange situation where yeah. where it's become, you know, it's and there are certain people who have an interest in it. You know, and it, look, this yeah. goes back to this goes back to this shows you this connects with what's wrong in our economic system. It show it connects with what's wrong in venture capital, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, for a whole venture capital space right now has a a profound crisis because for a long time, uh, people, you know, you were only looking venture capitalists because of the dynamics of the of the game right. and of the system and how it works and so on. They were only looking for the next big disruptor, the next big uh, company that can come along and blitz yes. scale, blow anybody, everybody else out of the water, and just and just kind of take over a market at, uh, you know, break break things as 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 uh, as the famous uh, dictum goes: uh, move, move fast and break things. things. Right? Break <laughs> things. No matter what you break, doesn't matter. Break everything on the way. Right? <laughs> yeah. And this model, this led to the this led to the the uh, you know the all the crises that we had in the in the space in the uh, with the yep. uh, Silicon Valley Bank and others. Uh, you know, the whole space kind of starting to collapse on itself. Yeah. And now, now people in the venture capital space themselves, a lot of them are saying, look, our model is not working. It's not, it doesn't benefit us in the long term. It doesn't benefit humanity. A lot of people who have capital also are starting to talk about patient capital, mm. are talking about different modes of, of, of investing. So that mindset shift is starting to happen gradually. People are starting to talk about impact when they're investing as well, right? So yeah. So this connects. This connects with 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 uh, what we were saying. Is progress always good? Is disruption always good? The answer is yes. If you're only looking for short term returns, then yeah, okay, every disruption is good. Doesn't matter what you're disrupting because you don't care about the social consequences. Mm -hmm. You don't care if you're destroying nature. You don't care if you're destroying society. You don't care if you're destroying jobs. Right? You're making short term profit. So every disruption is good. Right? But if you're then saying, "Well, oh, wait a moment," if you're only valorizing short-term disrupt, short-term profit, you're actually shooting shooting yourself in the foot, your kids, your the next yep. generation, everybody else, right? You're just damaging our own long-term progress 
or prospect, right? So then you can say, okay, wait a moment. Not every type of product. We need to start to understand that there is a good, a better, a wise way of innovating, a wise way of generating profit as well. And there's a, a dumb and quick way, which yeah. you can make money with it, but it's not in the benefit of humanity to do that, right? So, Yeah, it's fascinating on like on a grand scale, if you just pan back and look at us as like one giant entity, sometimes I think to myself, like how far do we have to get before we realize we're killing ourselves? You know what I mean by that? Like, like the people in positions that have the most, and I know that that's like a subjective term, but it seems to me, like, do you want to be the richest man in a shitty condo that's breaking down and like the world around you sucks? Like, do you want to be that guy? Or do you want to maybe be someone that is looking out and, and, and being proud of what you see outside your window? Like, yeah, dude, there's fucking less home. Like, how do you, how do we see homeless people and not go, oh my God, that's us being really sick. Oh my God, that's cancer on us. What the fuck are we doing to ourselves? Like, how do we not see that as a giant warning sign for ourselves dying? And I, I'm guilty of it too. Like sometimes I walk by and I'm like, this guy's got some real problems, man. I don't know how to fix it. So I'll just keep walking by it. You know, and sometimes it's, it's just this idea that it's so big. What can I do as an individual? But that's bullshit, right? Every person can do something, right? Like you can try to become the very best version of yourself. Like that's something. But what are some other things that we can do to like help stop this this momentum of just moving into this destruction, man. What do you think? Is that too nihilistic or what? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, George. I don't know how, how, you know, I don't know what your, your, in your podcast, I don't know if you have a focus on, on specific, is it, is it everything goes? Dude, it's everything, everything man everything there's, goes? There's, there's, no, there's no box over here man no box? No, yeah. like, okay. i okay. only talk about this okay so so to be perfectly honest i i'm completely of the conviction that we need a we need to evolve the entire system and that includes everything art the politics the yeah. the economic system the way that you know the great visionary buckminster fuller he was seeing the you know the the yeah. he was already decades before everybody else he was seeing that he was kind of taking this this bird's eye view on the whole planet and he was looking down and was saying like this is like looking like people doing you know just stupid like people are just doing stupid things if you take if you look from far away you see all these little creatures there and they're all just spending most of their resources uh you know fighting each other oppressing each other kind of stealing from each other yeah. being inefficient on yes. a big scale being completely inefficient Right, using all their resources for inefficient purposes. If you look at it from from a yep. bigger perspective, right? Yeah. And why is that? Because of mindsets, because of political system, because of ingrained systems that we have, which are keeping people in boxes and and which are keeping people in ideologies that yep. pit them against each other, right? So what can we do? Do we have to take sides? Do we, in this world, which right now is going towards more and more and more conflict. Yeah. You know, look, when I was growing up, and I'm a millennial, but I'm like the old millennials, right? Like the first, yeah. the first <laughs> millennial in that day, like early 80s, right? So but when I was growing up, uh, the people in every, uh, you know, the common conception was that World War One, World War Two, World Wars are a thing of the past. Like mm. you could not even speak about if you said World War Three, people would say, "Oh, science fiction or a science fiction <laughs> story." It's like so because it was not it, it was not conceivable. You know, it was not right. conceivable that this is possible. Nowadays, people are making go on YouTube and people are telling you, "Here's where you yeah. should go take your money during World War Three to be safe. Here's where you should build your bunker." It's like yeah, what? It's like everybody's talking about it. Yeah, I was like, "What's happening?" You know. So, and and this is crazy, but yes. but but we're our world is going toward in that direction where things that seem crazy, right? Yeah, people getting controlled, their brains getting controlled through chips that they implant or or with CBDCs that know everything you spend, yeah. you know, your whole money inflow coming in and out, right? Not saying that all those things can only be used for bad purposes, right. but they can be used for extremely dystopian purposes, of course. right? Yeah, so all of these things are kind of coming. It, it coming on, you know, entering our reality, 
entering our our field of 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 consciousness and our field of reality and what are we to do about it i i believe again to go back to buckminster fuller yeah. he was he was he said if you want to make a system obsolete right if you want to overcome this system don't fight it create another system a new system that makes the old one obsolete yeah. right because if you fight the existing one all you're going to be is a partisan you know or an activist yeah. or whatever yeah. somebody who's there oh you know you're bad you know these politicians are bad those politicians you know but instead what should you do you should create a new system that even though right now you're creating it it looks like uh you know you look like a I don't know, fringe or crazy or whatever. Oh, look at these crazy people. They're trying yeah. to build a system that's that is a new system for whatever, for economy, for data, and so on. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. You know, crazies. It's all right. The people who are now the crazies. Once once the world gets gets even worse, right? Or once the world gets to a place where where people really start to realize, wait, this is not working, the people who who, who were the crazies suddenly right. are look like pioneers, right? <laughs> So, so that's why that's why if you're telling me what we should do, I think we should yeah. I think we should work on creating new systems. And this means new holistic systems, spiritually, technology, technologically, and economically. Right? And there's technologies out there for that. There's technologies, there's there's uh, crypto tokens yeah. that you can have for, for communities, there's new ways of having data, there's people working on regenerative. Uh, agricultures and regenerative energy. It's almost like a yeah. lot of different things are out there, but what's needed is courageous communities of people coming together and experimenting with these new sets of technologies to create new forms of living. That is beautiful. You're right. And it's, I love the quote from Buckminster and it's really well said it on some level. I love images and symbology. And the one that comes to mind when I'm hearing you talk about the way in which we should make old systems obsolete is this picture of, there's like this optical illusion and maybe you've seen it. It's like, there's this picture of an old lady, but if you stare at it, it's a young lady, but then you pull them back into old lady and you go, it's a young lady. And it's hard to see both. Cause like your mind switches between them. Like it's old, it's young. But if you focus long enough, you can, you can voluntarily move between the old lady and the young lady. The old lady and the young lady. And on some level, I think that that has to do with like semantic flexibility, like your ability to not only see both of those images simultaneously, but once you do that, now you can look at the, our society and be like, oh, it's the same thing. The Republicans, the Democrats, the gays, the strays, the blacks, the white, like it's the fucking same thing. Just a little twist on it. You're just seeing a little different because you're from this angle. And once you do that, that that allows you to step outside that paradigm. And when you speak to these new tools, these new ideas, I'm super stoked talking to you because I know you're on the forefront of it. And I talk to other people on the forefront. There's, there's this new, I don't know if it's new, but this idea of like human design. I start looking into that and I'm like, that's pretty amazing. The way in which this particular set of beliefs forces an individual to look introspectively at themselves on a spiritual level. And as I'm thinking about that, I met this girl who's like, not, I'm into I'm into human design, but I'm using it in human resources to build companies. And I'm like, woo, next level. Oh, you got a technology company and you're using human design to build a an HR team? Oh, so I don't need to have a degree from this Ivy League school. I need to have this introspective ability to see myself in this way. Like that, I see it common, Dr. B. You see, like, right? That makes sense, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's lots of different approaches. There's lots of different experiments going out there. I'm not yeah. saying there aren't there. There's so many out there. And I'm sure you know, you're talking to lots of different experimenters yeah. at the forefront of, of the of this new creation that we need, which unites technology and spirituality yes. and, and new ways of, of yes. creating new ways of being. Yeah, but it's I think it's 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 also, yeah, it's, look, I mean, experimentation. In every experimentation, you have, like, the experimentation you do for the purpose of being able to say, this worked, this, well, this didn't work so much. This worked okay. This worked really, really well, right? Yeah, yeah. And that process, that's that's an important process that we're in right. right now. Because there's also, I mean, there's a lot of, it's great that a lot of people are coming up with things, right? But, uh, yeah, I think there are some, 
that are more that are deeper and 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 more uh, more capable maybe or more more rooted in in a certain traditions and wisdom and yeah. some that are a little bit less so okay you, you see where I'm getting a little bit so I'm not the biggest fan of human design but 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 but, <laughs> right. but I appreciate it a lot because it does something great it does something great it does it's something all great it takes a lot of this old cosmological wisdom and it puts it into a new form, which is right. is amazing. I'm 100 for that, right? But I think you can do that still a little bit better, right? They're doing yeah. it, but, but yeah. But, <laughs> but, what, like, what, what else can like, <laughs> what, what don't like, what else can be done? Is like that's an example yeah. of some things that I see. But sure. what are some examples of things that you see that you're excited about? Examples of these kind of experiments? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. I mean, it's like. There, there are experiments in uh, lots of different fields. Um, for instance, uh, in immersive technologies, mm -hmm. right? Immersive technologies, there's now a uh, lots of uh, applications that people are building with, okay, you got the Apple headsets and so on and so forth. You got that yeah. this is going mainstream. People are starting to, you know, wear it outside and I don't know, go on the, you know, be on the subway with wearing a, a weird thing on their head. But now you also have applications that some people are building, which are emulating uh, certain visualization techniques mm -hmm. that actually evolve your 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 inner well-being. That actually are able to unlock higher spiritual states in you. Right, things that in the past you had to sit there and learn certain visualization techniques. Now you can actually have have that in an immersive uh, environment. Right, so. This is there, there is this is completely new. There's new technologies of spiritual or consciousness development, of consciousness expansion, right? Which are being tested right now. Mm. Right. Now there is people building there, there's lots and lots of different things that are being done. There's people building immersive domes, right? There's people building uh there's people taking uh biomarkers from 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 rings, mm. from, from yeah. various types of wearables that you have where you can see, okay. What what you did here, the experience you had, this is how it impacted you. This is how it impacted your your uh, you know not just your vitals, but also you know your brain activity. Several markers that you can get, physiological markers you can see. But now, can you put these things together? Right, this mm -hmm. was just two or three examples, but there's so many different things that people are doing. Right, can you put all of these together to to really use technologies to advance people? Mm. Right? I think there's a huge space for that still because a lot of these experiments are still new. And I could go on and on and on. There's experiments in, yeah. in, art, in artificial intelligence, benevolent artificial general intelligence that people are working on, right? There's there's what well, the cryptos that I mentioned before, where there's some great things happening. People are launching crypto coins with all kinds of new governance structures in there. Right. So and it's almost it's a lot, too, because, you know, because there's every technology has its own experimentation fields. Right. And so I think one thing is like we're almost like because we're in this age of specialization. Yeah. Everybody is a specialist. Right. I'm a specialist for AI. I'm a specialist for blockchain. I'm a specialist for econ you know, the economy. I'm sure. a specialist for psychology and so on and so forth. But what we need is more of the the renaissance type of uh, universal mindset which tries to bring these together right and tries to say like oh yeah. how can we take all of these new things that are going on and and create these kind of holistic experiments for advancing humans yeah like an archaic revival of sorts you know we've found our way so deep into these specificity you know it's interesting i was working with this startup called token of me and they're they're measuring flow state well they're they're trying to find ways in which they can measure flow state through different monitors and feedback and stuff like that. And it's, it's a fascinating concept. Uh, Susan Brown, I think, is, is heading up that. Um, but it's interesting. Like, the, It seems like the deeper you go, the bigger it gets. It's like, oh, maybe it's, maybe it's in between heartbeats. Or maybe it's a combination between heart frequency and brain states. But the more that I start diving deep into there, I'm like... I don't know that you can measure the spiritual feelings we have. And I think that there's sort of a, a, a problem with technology right there or a lack of understanding. Like we have this incredible technology and we are desperately trying to find ways to measure things that are immeasurable. 
It's like trying to come mm. up with a word that doesn't exist. It's like that mm. same thing in psychedelics where like you, you're tripping your balls off, man. And like you got this great idea, but you can't express it. You know what I mean? Mm. Like there's no linguistic pathway for it. What, what do you think is that? Can you just speak to that idea a little bit? No, this is very good. This, you got a really good point there, George, because uh, the we're, you know, we got to be careful that, you know, we don't fall into this, into this. Okay, look. Let's take all of these amazing experiences that yeah. because I talked about traditions before, right? right. Spiritual traditions. And so right. Let's take all of these amazing uh, learnings and the traditions, the experiences that people had over thousands of years, passed on to each other in, in, in yeah. these set and settings and so on. And let's all you know quantify them and measure them all, <laughs> of them, right? Let's quantify, yeah. measure them, and then we reduce all of them to just a yes. certain set of brain waves, right? That's almost like saying. Oh, love, that's just these neurotransmitters, right? It's just dopamine and serotonin and so on. No, love is more than just dopamine and yeah. serotonin. Yes, it correlates with these neurotransmitters, but yeah. it's not just that, right? It's yeah. There's an eternal quality to it too, right? Yeah. And especially if you're talking about religious love. Yeah. Like if you talk about, for instance, the love of Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, yeah. right? which, is, yeah. which, is a, which is a universal love. Right, which is a universal love, right? And somebody would come and say, "Okay, this is now I'm breaking this down into dopamine and serotonin and such." No, wait, this is not. There's there is a metaphysical quality to this, right? right. There is a there is a trans transcendent quality yeah, to this, right? word. and and this transcendent quality you have in 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 all of the authentic spiritual practices. Even in flow states, in floats when you say yeah. flow state, yes. Okay, if somebody goes into a flow state and they're creating something which is you, you know, it's their divine mission to do this, right? They're an artist, they're completely in flow, they're creating something which okay, they're really creating for eternity in that moment, yeah. right? Yeah. And they're just they're just doing this, right? And it's and then you can say, Yeah, I took all of the vitals and all of physiology. Here's all the fact, you know, here's all the numbers. I got all the exact breakdown of this person's body reaction, <laughs> yeah. and pulse and so on and so forth. Okay, good. Not bad, you know, but can you now emulate it? <laughs> no, no, you know, no. If it's not your mission, you know, if it's, it's right. not your mission to be that transcendent artist, you know, you can't. So, so, so while I'm all for this. Right, this 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 learning to 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 map and monitor and measure, super important, right? But we shouldn't we shouldn't fall into the trap of thinking that we can map and monitor and measure the transcendent, right? Yeah, because that's yeah. a trap. That's gonna trap us if we you know we're gonna be we're gonna miss the point. Yeah, you know. So now, if you're saying is that is that forever impossible? Is it because our technologies are currently not don't have access to the transcend dimensions? You know, then I don't know. <laughs> you know, like it's like, oh, but but I know with, with what we have right. If we're just looking at this three D, you know, dimensions, yeah, there's something that eludes us. There's some, and this is also why uh, all of the you know, George, the sciences are currently going through this ma massive overhaul to this massive. Crisis, paradigm shift. They call it a paradigm yeah. shift in sciences, where all of these, all of the pioneering sciences, they have this one huge problem. They call it the problem of consciousness. Hmm. You know, they cannot explain why consciousness ex exists. Neuroscientists have dissected right. the brain every which way possible, right? And you cannot find any consciousness in there, right? Yeah. You can only find electrical signals, right? And similarly, physicists. They have looked at the, the fundamental dimensions, you know, fundamental physics, you know, quantum physics, and so on, looking at what's happening on the fundamental level of, of, of matter. And there is something that seems to be irreducible. There's different interpretations there, but there's something that seems to be irreducible with consciousness, right? And they can't, we, our current science cannot measure, map, and monitor consciousness, right? It can only measure its, its, its correlates. It's, you know, it's correlates that you're going to be in this state, your brain is going to do this and so on and so forth. But it can't really go all the way to capture that thing, which the spiritual traditions talk about when they say, you know, when they say the experience of the absolute. I would I would love to see why is it say the no absolutes? Why, why is it? Yeah. What's, the, what's the no? What's the connection between the no absolutes yeah. and the and the and the and the absolute of the spiritual traditions? Can you tell me that? Ben probably can. Um, 
the, I think that the fundamental premise of the book, no absolutes is that exactly what you're saying. Like there's no way to pin down that, which is irreducible. Like the hard problem of conscience, like you said, like you can't, there's a reason it's a hard problem because no one can figure it out and no one has figured it out. You're not going to figure it out because you can't figure it out. It's not for you to figure out <laughs> like that. And the harder you look for something, it's, it's elusive. It's like, it's like the, you know what it is? It's like the idea of, of the observer. You know, when, when they, when you watch Schrodinger's cat, Hey, how come when I watch it, it changes because you have an effect on it that you can't see or measure. And the fact you're trying to do, it, it's going to make you crazy. And that's what's going on in our society. Like you can't measure it. Like the half of the people look at this and be like, we got to figure this thing out. The other people are like, you can't, it's just faith. I think that's a pretty good foundation of, of where we are. Some people want to know how to, I, mean, I, I think part of the problem is the people that want to figure it out, mm -hmm. they want to figure it out so they can capture it. Does that kind of make sense? Like, I want to figure out what, the, like, I'll give you an example with psychedelics mm -hmm. that I see. Yeah. They're trying to figure out how do we, how do we, how do we capture the psychedelic experience so that we can patent it? Like they want to patent it. You can't right. do it. And, but it doesn't stop them from trying. Like we'll spend billions of dollars trying. Like why don't you just take the mushroom and have it instead of trying to spend billion dollars to profit from it? But I, th I know I'm kind of bird walking there a little bit. But yeah, I don't think it's possible to explain the transcendent. And we should get together and celebrate it instead of trying to grab hold of it and control it, right? Maybe that's what it is. People want control and they, they, they want to be the person that can have the divine spirit. They want to control it. I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm now I'm yeah. getting out in the weeds, man. What do you think? Yeah. No, this is a, this is a, I, I like what you're, okay. I like how you're seeing this. I like how you're seeing this because I mean, look, the, the truth is there are, there are some, you know, people, there are people who, there are people who, who are mainly motivated by their ego. Right? Of course, that yeah. exists, and and in in, his, in the spiritual traditions, there's a name for that. You know, there's images of certain warnings of okay, don't go this way, otherwise mm -hmm. it doesn't end well for you. You're going to go in the other spheres, you know. And yeah. there's but some people make the decision that that's how they want to live. So metaphysically speaking, they want to be the cancer of the world, right? Mm. Because that's what the cancer is. Cancer is uh, it looks like it's growing, right? Mm. It looks like it's growing. It looks like it's doing really well. It's growing faster yeah. than everybody else even, yeah. right? Like if you look at it like that, cancer is a cell that decides that its own growth is more valuable than the survival of the host, yes. right? It yeah. says like, I don't care. Even if everybody else dies, I need to grow, right? Yeah. And that's, that's egoism. That's, that's the kind of, and that's in the spiritual tradition, it's called evil. Yeah. Right? It's like somebody decides to say like, you know, I don't care about the rest. I just want, you know, at the cost of everybody else to grow. Right. Some people make that decision, unfortunately. Right. They still have the they will always still have the chance to repent. But, you know, and we all we all probably, you know, we all go through that. We all have to. There's nobody is uh, perfect. Right. Nobody yeah, goes through of course. not having made that decision at certain points in life, having valorized themselves more than than the big picture. Right. Than everybody. Than than the the growth of the whole, right? To put yeah. it this way. But, but okay, those people who, let's say, who have made that decision, right? What are they trying to do? They're trying to avoid the consequences of their actions. They're trying mm. to avoid as long as possible yes. the consequences of their actions because they yeah. know that at the in the end, they're going to, you know, you can't go against God. You know, it's like it's, it's futile, you know, like you're going to yeah. lose. You're going to lose. Like at the yeah. end, you, know, yes. you might have a good time along the way. You think what's a good time, but, right. you know, you're not, you know, you're going to lose it. Then. So, you are. And they know that. They know that. So and they're trying to avoid the consequences of that decision for as long as possible. And and one way to do that is to try to what you were just saying now, just to capture the transcendent through technology. Mm -hmm. Right. Capture like. If they're thinking, what if I can create technologies that allow me to have access to all infinite, uh, you know, metaphysical experience? What if I can yeah. or capture technologies that can make me immortal? You know, the, the yeah. sort of mind upload, yeah. upload the mind and have the mind live eternally. Right. Like, these are ways. 
that people are trying to avoid or capture, right? That yes, that transcendent. I don't know. If yeah. I, I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, I, man. I do you like the cancer metaphor or the parasite metaphor better? Oh, I mean, what's a parasite? A parasite lives at the cost of the host, as well, right? And but it's kind of limited in its growth. It can mm. only grow. so the cancer is can grow unlimited. Mm. You know, it can grow unlimited. I think I mean, you know, both metaphors have something for them, but right. It's a very apt metaphor of what's 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 wrong. If something goes wrong in spiritual development, right. cancer is a really, really apt metaphor to capture that. Yeah. Yeah. I I, th I think there's something in between those two metaphors, like this idea of symbiosis. Like you need right. like like something maybe okay. Symbols speak louder than words, right? Mm -hmm. So if I say to you, I can sit here and talk about symbiosis and parasites and cancer, or I can say, I can point to the yin and the yang sign. Mm -hmm. And there's that little spot of chaos, that dark spot in the white and that white spot in the dark is moving around, right? Mm -hmm. That balance is there. But when we, when you're out of balance, then you have a parasite. You have this thing inside that is like, I'm going to eat everything. Or you have this cancer that's going to die on some level. That's where I see us, man. I, I I agree that that's where we are as a planet right now. We are in the midst of either fighting this cancer, purging this parasite, or coming to terms with some sort of balance. I think we're desperately trying to find that right now. And like that, that's what leads to, to war. It's like, are we going to fight this thing or are we going to give in? And once enough of the body, and I'm speaking about the planetary body, understands, okay, connected there's this great let me can i tell you a quick story that kind of encapsulates yeah, this in my opinion? yes thank you for that so <laughs> one day the hands say hey man we're getting tired of picking all these things and the legs go yeah man we're getting tired of walking around and like we, we do all the walking and the hands go man we do all the picking and the mouth's like man i do all the chewing and the lazy stomach gets all the food doesn't do anything just sits in there and gets all the food so the hands go on strike and they don't pick anything. The legs go on strike and they quit working and the mouth stops chewing. And all of a sudden they realize they start getting weak. They start getting sick and they realize, hmm, maybe the stomach is doing something. Maybe this useless eater of a lazy stomach down here is actually providing all the nutrients and energy to us so that we can do the things we're doing. You know, and I think that that is the holistic approach that the world is desperately trying to figure out right now. Like, it's really easy to look at all these. These people are lazy. These people are dumb. No, this is a system and it works together in a way that can be better. It can definitely be better. We need to figure it out, man. And I think that people need to come to this idea. And I think that that is spiritual in nature. Coming to the idea that we're all connected here. We're this, we, we are a closed system. You're not going to put anything new in. Like this is a closed system and it's, it's going to work or it's not going to work. And it's way too heavy right now on one side. And it's going to collapse. Like I, you know, and I think that's where spirituality comes in. Now, what do you think about that? Yeah, this is a, this is a good, uh, it's a, it's a nice metaphor to think about, <laughs> you know, uh, but I think the, 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 unfortunately the reality is that there are, to stay in that metaphor, there are some people right now who are thinking we can replace the the stomach with we can replace it with this tool, right? Or we can replace sure. look, there's a lot of there's some people thinking we don't need manual workers anymore soon because of automation and AI, right? And yeah. then uh large parts of the population are gonna be redundant, you know, superfluous, right? We don't need them, right? What we do you, don't need them, right? What do you think and about then, that? Yeah. So that's what well, there's some people thinking like that, like, okay, we can replace everybody. What do we do then? And then if there is going to be all of these people not working, right? And they also don't have the wealth because the wealth is going to be, you know, still with us. Even though, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities over the last 20, 30, 40 years due to tech. Tech has brought a lot of opportunity. Everybody yeah. can start things much faster and easier. Now with AI, you can start your own venture quickly, right? For yourself. Yeah. And so on. You can do a lot, but... Nonetheless, 
uh, on the big scale, on the global scale, right? Actually, the difference between the rich and the and the people who are not really doing much has become actually bigger, right? Yeah. So a lot of people who are kind of they're doing something, they're contributing something right now, but they could be replaced pretty quickly with what they're doing, right? And that's gonna talk. Okay, what are, what's happened? What happens then? You have all these people who don't have work. They need to take universal basic income, right? Uh, otherwise, they might rebel at some point. They might kind of go on the streets, or they might try to, you know. And then you get the idea that some people think that they don't. We don't need a large part of the. the if you if if in your metaphor, the yeah. stomach and the and the I don't know the different organs. If they represent different parts of humanity. Yeah. Then, yeah, we do have, unfortunately, some people who think that they can separate one part and have a head just in a vat, you know, like for, you know, like they think, like, oh, we can put the head in a vat and uh, yeah. have robots do the work and we can throw the rest of the body away. You know, this is some people thinking like this and, and not just, yeah, and they want to, you know, there's a real risk of what I call a breakaway space breakaway civilization you know there's a couple of authors yeah. who about to use this term yeah right but but i think there's a real risk of some group of people some elites right saying that okay we want to create our own we want to break away we want to create our own strand right of humanity of new mm -hmm. humanity which we don't need the rest for right also this, this ties into transhumanism transhumanism yeah. we have all of these new technologies coming up where you can vastly expand your capabilities intellectual physical mm -hmm. right in yeah. in in so many ways you can actually modify your genetics you can modify you yeah. can mix it with crispr cas9 and all this yeah. like that so when that's look when that becomes operational and it will there's no way you can stop that right you can't you can't just legislate for it not to happen right some somebody will offer it somebody else somewhere yeah. in, somewhere in the world right for those who want it right so when that becomes operational is it going to how do how are we going to deal with that are we going to uh, is this going to be just let's think this through oh okay. is this going to be mandated for everybody in the world to now upgrade all eight billion people or nine billion people no it's going to be accessible to a certain group of people if so that certain group of people they're suddenly going to be superhumans while everybody else is humans right they're suddenly going to be not just richer but they're going to be in every possible way, like far vastly more capable, like, you know, 50 times more intelligent, right? Physically far more capable, right? And, and that, if you don't, you know, if we don't, if we don't have a plan for this, if we don't have a plan for this, if we just say, oh, yeah, you know, let's go with this, whatever, and so on, you know, some, you know, somehow the market will figure it out. Somehow the states will figure it out at the United Nations. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah, what, these guys are going to figure it out. What are gonna, you know, they're just about to kill each other. You know? Yeah, it's like, you know, How are they going to figure out, like, yeah, China and, and U.S. And, God knows what, and whatever they're going to get together and figure out. No, they're not. They're just going to, you know, it's just going to be the, the whoever – you know the, the 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 might is you know right might is right kind of right. mentality of of whoever can get away with it they're going to do something unless unless we figure out a new you know we need to change so much we need yeah. to change so much as humanity to be able to be even able to deal with this with these new possibilities that are coming up right yeah. otherwise it's going to become just complete dystopia yeah. it's going to be complete dystopia There's so much like you can already see it happening. Like when I look at, you know, I was listening a while back to RFK, who's running for president in the U.S. on the Joe Rogan program. And I'm listening to these two guys. And real briefly, Joe Rogan says to RFK, man, you look great. What are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm on an anti-aging program. Real briefly, he talks about it. And, I, and you know, Joe Rogan talks oh, about, yeah. Rogan or, or RFK? Is it? Both of them. They're like, both of them are anti-aging. But look at those two guys. Like here's two guys like. I think Joe Rogan's close to 60. I think RFK is probably at least 60 or older. These guys are jacked. Like, like and you start thinking about it. it, doesn't take a whole lot of digging to be like, oh, this guy is on an incredible TRT program plus growth hormone plus some sort of nootropics. Like they, they don't they don't lie about yeah. it. Like, yeah. and look at them. Like those guys look great. Like that's a diff, that's speciation right there on some level. You know, it's like Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all of that. You know, I started yeah. and I started in my late 
30s you know so like to say like, okay, so, you know, i hope to when i you know probably i got we got a little bit of head start like what by the time you know uh that age comes around but you know yes it's it's pop you know you can yeah. do you can do a lot of things already now but i think it's going to be dwarfed by the the next layers and levels that are going to be unlocked right for for modifying yourself for advancing yourself i think we're just kind of scratching the surface there right with with all of these new things that are coming up and it's going to need more more uh it's need to, it needs to be thought through more i don't know where you were going with this because you just mentioned this then want to cut you yeah. off there what, is, what what's your thinking there about the fact that yes people are are now actively uh pursuing you know self enhancement human enhancement well i i think it speaks to this idea of the breakaway part of it cuz i i think what you're seeing is a race between technology and biology. Like I love, I love kind of neutral hacking, man. Like there's, um, mm -hmm. there's a, there's a site called science bio and they don't pay me any money. Science bio. If you're listening, you probably should. Okay. It's a really cool site. And they have like all the brand new peptides, man, like research chemicals, ladies and gentlemen, I'm yep. not advocating for stuff, but go check out science bio, mm -hmm. check out some of the peptides they have on there. And I've, I've been my own guinea pig. And I'll tell you what, like there are certain things that you can take that make you think in ways you didn't know possible. Sure. I'm like, oh my God, that makes plenty of sense. How the hell do I know that? Like, oh my God, this stuff's so fucking amazing. You know, and like, yeah. you know, it, it, once you take it, like yeah. it is scary a little bit. I'm like, I'm, I function better on that. And that's a weird thing to think about. Like, okay, is it, is it an addiction to want to be on it? Because you are you really functioning better? I, I don't thoroughly know that. But it seems to me there is a race between biology and technology. Now, if you, if you, if you can take these substances that make you think different, like a peptide, a lot of these things are just analogs of like, say, magic mushrooms or psychedelics that you can't find in nature. For me, like I took a pretty giant dose of mass, magic mushrooms last night. And I yeah. got some insights that changed my life. You know, I'm able to see my future. I'm not telling people I can see the future, but I can see my future in a way that I didn't know was possible. Mm -hmm. I can see things in my relationship that I need to work on and I can change them fast. Stuff that might take a year or two years in therapy, I can sit down with a giant dose of magic mushrooms and be like, okay, here's this huge problem that I have. I am not being honest with myself. Sometimes in this conversation with people I love, they're dismissive of me. Does that mean that they think that of me? Is that translating in their language in a conversation with another person? Yes, probably. I should bring that up to them. We could solve that so it doesn't have to go further. Like that can happen naturally. And, then that, and so even though people – like Bezos is another good one. Like if you look at the before and after of Bezos, before Amazon blew up, that guy was a different human being. Probably mm -hmm. he's, on, he's on all like the – on the – all of the life extension stuff too. But, you know, it's, I don't know what role technology can beat there. I mean, can a chip, can you put a chip in your head that's going to make you better? Or are we, is biology pushing back on technology saying like, look, I can do it better. And I think that, I know I'm kind of bird walking, but I think the biological realm, the earth has ways in which to enhance our cognitive abilities better than technology. What do you mean by that? When you say bi biology, like coming back at technology, okay. like what do you, what do you mean by that? Okay. I, I think that a large part of the technology that we're putting in place today is confirmation bias. You know, like what I mean is that we asked me a question again. I just lost it right there. Ask me that question. No, because you say uh, it's going to be biology versus technology, like, or it's going to be, you know, biology could actually somehow uh, prove to be even more capable. Yes. Of advancing us. How, what do you What do you mean? Why is it? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Okay. Thank you. You know, I think that biology, the world around us, the natural world around us, has all the answers, and it will reveal itself to us. Okay. Like right now we have this limited idea that neurotransmitters are only inside our head, maybe in our stomach a little bit, mm. but what, what about exogenous neurotransmitters? What right. about psilocybin? Like these are exogenous neurotransmitters. And when you ingest them, you get to speak to the world. 
And now we're starting to open up our ideas about faith. Now we're starting to right. open up our ideas. Like I can talk to the planet. I know people think this. I talk to the plants all the time. Sure. I did it last night and I learned a lot. I learned more last night than I could learn in a year of school about symbology, language, what's happening on the planet. Like, and that may seem crazy to people, but the, the world around us, the natural world around us is full of answers and ideas that are right there that we don't even know about. And we think technology is going to supplant that? Not at all. We, we just have to evolve to understand the bounty around us. And that's what I mean by biological. Does that make no, sense? No, I get. I totally get. Now I understand. Now I understand. I'm just. Uh, I'm just. I would just raise the the thought or question okay. whether that's biology, right? That is that that has all the answers, or if that's a different term. Because when we say biology, we're mm. kind of referring to. Right, like the this zoological right. domain of, <laughs> right. of you know, this back. so you know, but because because okay, you talk to a psilocybin, uh, in, and you have certain capabilities that you know that are very clear for people who have seriously engaged with these, right? With these, like it's yeah. not if you if you are they, if you smoke DMT, right? For instance, right. Or, you know, you're not gonna you see if you have a high enough dosage. You, you're you're that that's a dimension where there are entities yeah. which these are not made up in the sense of like you know some random generator made these you know no right. no no this is that this is you can only think that if you had not had that experience right because right. because they're a real there's there is a real like those are the, the doors of perception right the doors of perception and then it's like, okay bang right. this is the, there is other dimensions to, yes. to reality now there is you saw you talked about things like premonition you said like you had the the you had the yesterday you took you had the hit of psilocybin and you could see a future with certain things yeah right? absolutely right? Yeah. yeah so look uh a couple of decades ago if you said this people would think you're crazy right people think you're crazy you don't take you you know like this person yeah. is outside of the consensus of totally. what a rational person even talks about you know that's what it, that's how it was treated, like you know, for yeah. a couple hundred years, like oh hey, the witches and the sorcerers are yeah. crazy. Right? So, but now we're switching the paradigm in science, where more and more people are coming out to do look. Here's statistical evidence, like which is you know you, far beyond anything that could be random that telepathy exists. For instance, yes, right? this yeah. is real. Like there's lots of statistical studies at Princeton. Yep. There's a guy who has a whole. You know Dean Radin. I don't know if you know him. He has a he has a lab in in print at Princeton, right? Who's who's proven this time and again and again and again and again, right? With so many studies, right? There's yeah. that you have perception across space. You have perception yeah. across time, right? Why? Yeah. Because well, consciousness is is this field. It's connected, right? It's beyond. We already know this. That um, that this is how people are saying. We already know this. That. That, for instance, particles can be connected across across space and time, right? They're connected. Across. So yeah. if we know this, the physicists are telling us that particles are connected across vast kind of distances of space and time, mm -hmm. right? Then why would we not also think that yes, thoughts and consciousness can also be connected across space and time, right? But now here's the thing: if when we take those, when we take what did you call this exogenous neurotransmitters, we call this yes. more like uh biological in the world right neurotransmitters and that's a yeah. great way of talking about it because you can say <laughs> these are neurotransmitters of the not of the, of the big brain you know of yeah the, 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 the big brain you know the, the flesh the of god nature is kind of a brain too right it has its yes. own neurotransmitters a great way of talking about it but here's here's the thing so we can create those states uh, and I'm the more I, I advance in my own journey, the more I'm coming to because I did all of these substances, you yeah. know, like all the ones that not the ones that are just damaging you, like you know, but the ones that are psychological, the, the psychedelic ones, did all of them, right? Like experimented, yeah. try you know, long kind of phases of explorations and such. Sure. But now, the more I'm advancing in my spiritual practice, the more I'm realizing that what some of these spiritual practitioners and teachers say. Is there a lot of truth to it that you can create those states internally through your practice, right? So what does that tell you? The fact that we can create states and actually they can be even more reliable that way, right? They can be even more reliable and more kind of purified, yeah. more kind of more easier to control. Let's put it this way. Mm -hmm. a little bit easier to control, you know, because it's not just 
bang, you know, okay, you have to deal with this now. Oh shit, you know, so, uh, you know, so no, it's more controlled, you know, it's a little bit more controlled. You're sitting there in your meditation, you know, and then you're starting to get glimpses of certain things, you know. And the fact that we can do this without that we can that we have the innate ability. Yeah. yeah? So yeah. what was where am I going with this? Uh, you said biology. I'm not sure if it's maybe it is biology, maybe it is biology, maybe it is what it does when you say biology, does that include spirituality for you? Does that include spiritual experiences? Are they biological? Are they and maybe they are? I don't know. Maybe if, if you can see that, you know, if it, you know, you need to be any living creature. I mean, yeah. Yeah. If you say theology, it gets very it goes in a it goes mm. in a different domain. People are talking about oh, okay, like some people are arguing about whether this and that and so on. So spiritual, I don't know, spirituality. Maybe is a, maybe we can maybe. say maybe we can say spirituality, uh, uh, authentic spirituality, right? And then I would totally agree with what you're saying, hundred percent agree that we can't replace what because how did you say this? You said we're thinking that technology can replace all of that, but then we experience that we learn that way. The moment there is actually so much more still. That yeah. we haven't even learned yet from our own biology and our own spirituality, right? Things that we have access to already, uh, which could do, which could, yeah, which, and they, what now, what if we do both? Well said. What if we do both? What if we use the technologies, right? And at the same time, cultivate the, 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 the natural intelligence, the innate intelligence, the spiritual intelligence, right? What if we do both? I think that's what's happening right now. I think that that's what AI is doing. Like I use AI all the time and I start noticing patterns that like, like tapestry is a word that comes up all the time when people use generative AI. Like ask, to ask, ask it to write, ask AI to write you a story and it'll use the word tapestry. Like I think on some level it's telling us, maybe it's us telling us, maybe it's the collective conscious tapping you, but it's, it's starting to try to weave together, hey dummies, you're part of a tapestry. And like whenever you see the word tapestry, I always think, oh, someone used AI for that. But like maybe, maybe not. But the fact that I use AI and I'm starting to see these patterns come up means that I have a relationship with AI that's teaching me how to communicate better. And one of the biggest problems we have in the world is this lack of communication. And it's not that we can't talk or make signals. It's that we can't convey meaning to one mm -hmm. another. Like that's the hardest part. I think AI is working with us to help us solve that problem. Some people are afraid of whatever, but it's it is both. And and, and you're right. Like bi biology is not the right word. I don't I don't know the right word to describe it, but I'm mm -hmm. trying to think of it. Like because it's it's just one thing. I there's a real there's an image that comes to mind. I'm big on imagery, mm -hmm. and I, I used to deliver to this on University of Hawaii. There was this. Mm -hmm building and I would go in there, I had to buzz through the door and they had this amazing sculpture and it was like way in the back. And, and this sculpture was this, it was like, think of like a, a mirror. There's like a mirror in the middle. And on one side, there was a human figure made out of branches and it was pushing on that mirror. And on the other side of the mirror was this thing made out of like um, e-waste. So it had like circuits and computer parts and it was pushing on there. And mm -hmm. I remember just sitting in front of that piece of artwork and being like, why is this not like in the middle of the quad and like everybody's staring at us pushed way in the back and no one ever got us out i'm like this is us right here like it's such a wonderful metaphor to see these two forces pushing on each other you know and like it doesn't have to be combative you know it doesn't have to be we got to take this over we got to take that over we got to extract this it can be like hey we are working together to become better and it i, I just think we're limited in our ability to understand what's happening but but maybe that maybe it is this thing coming together and it just looks messy man what do you think yeah, yeah. i mean first of all there's somebody here is a linkedin user i don't know what the name but yeah i, I like yeah. what they're saying you know i just wanted to kind of acknowledge that i like what they're saying <laughs> yeah let's go through these comments for a minute man and and, and participate sure. yeah. I'll, I'll to participate a little bit okay so let me start off here with we got this LinkedIn user. This one comes in. This might, it says, we should be working on improving our brain functioning instead of AI. Why do human beings always have to replace another being or thing? Why can't we learn the boundaries of our brains? What, are you, you want to take that one? What do you think? 
is yeah this is from nancy and this connects with what you were just saying like is this already emerging this this fusion mm -hmm. symbiotic symbiotic fusion yes. of AI and humans you know and nancy says we should improve should we improve our brain functioning instead of ai right why do we have to always replace another being or thing why can't we learn the boundaries of our brains yeah uh so there's this whole talk of um you know the more you're out so you know in some ways we all have a brain prosthetic already in our yeah. smartphones right yeah, smartphones totally. are brain prosthetic like your your you know somebody grew up with you can see your kids kids who grew yeah. up with smartphones they are they think different they work their brain works different you know yeah. different than kids that didn't have that right it's completely it just operates differently right yeah. because that's part of their brain almost right you know and and now you're saying now the next generations we're going to have uh, a functioning conversational AI. And at some point, imagine a conversational AI doesn't even need you to type anymore. It's just yeah. in your head right away, right? Or it's just directly connected with your neurons. Okay, right. now it's more than a just, okay, this is now, you have outsourced a vast part of memory and mm -hmm. kind of connections between things. And all of that, you have outsourced that to the AI, right? And in some ways, uh, people who are, uh, I think there's already some early studies on this that that uh, it, it impairs certain uh, certain capabilities to use AI a lot, you know, to do have this new conversational AI to use yeah. that a lot impairs certain capabilities. But on the other hand, obviously gives you vast new capabilities, right? You have yeah. this, your whole internet is the whole collected knowledge, human knowledge is at your fingertips, you know, just integrated right away, whatever you want to say, right? So. Um, is this already a new form of, is this already a new symbiotic intelligence, a new meta intelligence, human machine intelligence, right? Yeah, it's, I think this is already a new form of intelligence. Certainly it never existed before in, 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 in history. It never existed in, in, bio, in, in whatever billion years or on, on, of earth, right? Or million years of human history never existed before, right? So, but is that should we now to come finally like long-winded way to come to nancy's question should we uh is that good and this also connects to what we said at the very beginning of our conversation george Owen says that is progress innovation always good right or no do we need a wise innovation right and i say to that yes there is actually vast dangers if we are uncritically just say oh this is great more 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 tomorrow they're going to say to you do you want to chip in your brain and you know you're going to get faster access to all of this you can comment everything and it's meta that gives you the brain the brain chip right and meta it's like here's the our next model of the brain you know we just want access to whatever you're thinking in return you know like <laughs> and, and, and we have some uh, you know we have some uh just terms of yeah, there, just, but you don't need to read the terms and conditions you know it's like but you know but it's for free you can get the chip for yeah. free you know like here for free who wants this right <laughs> So yeah, a lot of people will take it. Yeah, sure, I'm down. You know, I'm down. Yeah. Like, and, and 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 that's a slippery slope right there. Yeah. Like the, the most the slipperiest, the most slippery slope in in human history, right? Because that can lead to extreme dystopian scenarios, extremely dystopian scenarios, right? That yeah. are, we can't even imagine right now. We're already saying right now that social media is manipulating people and so on. Yeah. You know, so what's next? What if there if it's directly in your brain, right? So I think it's huge. It's there's huge dangers in, involved in in just saying okay, more, more, more tech without any critical introspection, without any kind of asking. Okay, where's the boundaries? How does this work? And there's a lot to be said for what Nancy's saying here. That okay, yeah. we should actually go to. Uh, we should work on our internal resources. We should work on what you call the biology, the spirituality, right? Yeah. And then find, find, uh, uh, find. Model, find intelligent models, find wise models. Let's say this, wise models, like m w models informed by wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. And that that in which we can use these technologies, right? But not blindly just, okay, everything that comes. I'm, and I'm, a, you know, I'm doing that. I, I love new innovation. So I will use the next thing that comes out, you know. Yeah. I'm sure you do too, right? Because, okay, we we love the new, you know, the new capabilities that yeah. you have with it. But super important super important to create these the awareness and the and the models for how people can can have a wise use of of 
of, of technologies that still allows them the personal, spiritual, holistic development. Right? I think this is going to be the most important uh, uh, battle or the most, I don't want to even call it, the most important kind of uh, challenge right? Mm -hmm. that we're going to have as collectively over the next couple of decades. Yeah, I, I got, um, on some level, I think that you're beginning to speak to the idea of accelerationism. You know, what's your take on that, that particular? Accelerationism, as in the, there's a couple of people, actually, the guy who wrote the book, um, is that, you know, are you referring to the book that was written by Nick? Nick mm. Yeah, I think that is it. Like, yes, I yeah. am. Yeah. Yeah, I know him pretty well. Uh, you know, we were doing philosophy together in, in London, in, you know, 15 years ago, but um, 12 years ago, 15 years ago. And, and, nice. and yeah, and, and that whole group of people, you know, and they're basically, they came up with this out of the, it's a very strange position. It's a UK thing, you know, mm -hmm. thrown out of England where I did my philosophy PhD, you know, in that, in that kind of milieu with those, with a lot of those people. Yeah. And uh, it's basically, this was people who were, um, they were a bit disappointed with, with, they were very disappointed with where society is going. Right. And then they took this idea that, uh, the only way it's going to get better if it gets much worse first, you know, and, and, and we need to now just, uh, invest everything into and support in every way possible. Like everything that's, that's taking society accelerate, right. Accelerate right. all of these, basically what I was going to innovate this, when I was yeah. saying disruptive innovation, right. So you got people who are who are just supporting disruptive innovation just because it's cool or just because there's money in it, you know, without questioning is this wise or not. And then you got weirdly these accelerationists who are also supporting everything about it, but not because they want it, but because they think that everything is the world is bad and only if it gets much worse, it's gonna get better after, right? <laughs> so we need to accelerate everything, right? We need to accelerate everything in order to then somehow magically. Uh, magically, then they will emerge, and this is goes back to some something you know where uh, Marx, Karl Marx, said somewhere mm -hmm. that uh, there's these stages mm -hmm. of of e economic development, and then after you know the it's kind of automatically leads right. to the best form eventually. So if we're not there yet, we just need to push harder and harder, you know. So and this is a very, I, I mean, you can already tell I'm, I'm not friend of in any way of accelerationism because it's just insane it's just thinking like what how how is anything good going to come out by exacerbating you know by making everything worse right accelerationism if that's what you're referring to that that movement or that yeah. thought you know that philosophy it says that right uh yeah we should just make disruptive innovation take it to the infinite you know and then somehow it will get so bad that that you know things will get good you know things bad better things will come out of it i don't believe in that i think we should create uh as i was saying i think we should create experiments mm -hmm. for uh a you know for you know my position is the is buckminster fuller's one yeah right we should create experiments for for a new design of of human machine inter integration and for planetary interactions and even if they're just experiments right now even if they're just zones right now even if they're not already like okay you you don't you, you don't need to already say here's the system for the whole to solve every problem in the world or you know the world economy right. or whatever but you can say we create a system we create something that's an experiment that shows you how we can do things better right, right. and and because that can that's how it creates momentum it gets momentum people join you know people join people see people learn people practice people share what, uh, Jordan, are you, I mean, you know, are you seeing yourself and you're in Hawaii, right? I am. Yeah. Yeah. Are you seeing yourself any worthwhile projects, experiments, uh, which are around technology, social development, spiritual development, these things coming together, like holistically, are you seeing any, there's, there's, and you're talking to so many people. So I mean, yeah. I'm sure you must, you know, you must have some that you're, that come to mind. Yeah, I, I'm 
about six months ago, maybe a little bit longer, six months ago, there was like this incredible, devastating fire in Maui. You know, I don't know what caused those fires, but I do know that the town of Lahaina was eradicated. You know, and it's really interesting. There's all these weird things that happen there. Like, I, sometimes I'm kind of conspiracy minded. I don't know. I know that all the people that were really all the chiefs and like i'm not even i don't mean chiefs like hawaiian people have chiefs i mean like the chief of police the chief of the fire department the chief of staff like all the chiefs of maui were over here at a fema camp when that place burned down like that's really convenient you know especially like and i don't know what happened but what i did see happen because of that was a friend of mine who's one of the largest landowners in maui Mm -hmm. And he's a huge fan of mushrooms and cultivating in the land. And he's, he's steeped in tradition. He figured out, okay, I don't know what happened, but I know there's a clean water crisis. Mm -hmm. I can build these mycelium socks to clean the water. And all of a sudden he reaches out to a bunch of people on his farm. People start mm -hmm. coming there. He reaches out to people on LinkedIn and you have people from around the world coming to help him with these new innovative technologies Mm -hmm. that are holistic like they're using fungus as a natural way to filter water from buildings that have been built with asbestos like they're naturally figuring out you know oh mm -hmm. we can use nature to solve this problem that we we did like that that is an incredibly innovative way that marries technology with tradition and i'm seeing it emerge and it's coming from these crises that gives me a lot of hope like Oh, maybe there is a grand plan. Like maybe we messed things up a little bit and, and nature is coming around. Like, are you guys done yet? You're going to start. Are you guys done yet? Like a father or a mother, like, okay, how much further should I let you go? You big dummy. Look at this, <laughs> look at this mess you made. I'm going to show you how to clean it up. But first I want you to look at it. Rub your face in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I see it happening. I do. I, I see that happening right here in my home state. Another mm -hmm. thing that I see happening too is people's attitude toward working jobs that are meaningless. You know, it's all of us can go and find meaning at our job, but people are beginning to understand what am I doing? I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. And I think COVID had a big part of this. Like, what am I doing? I get up, I get up at five in the morning. I take my beautiful daughter to school. It's like an hour and a half ride. And then I go to work. It's another 30 minutes. So it's five in the morning. By the time I get to work, it's eight o'clock. I'm going to work there for 12 hours. Come home. I get home. Everybody's sleeping. I, I spent no time talking to my wife. Couldn't help with homework. But you know what? I made 500 bucks today. Like that is such a horrible, horrible way to live your life. And I get it. But people are trapped in this idea that you think you're providing, but you're not. You're taking away from your life. And the system is, I think, is it's an intelligent system. And it's going, okay, people start waking up. This is wrong. You can't do this. Like you are creating a worse life for you and the planet by getting away from first principles. So I think that, like, I don't know if it's a technology. I don't know if it's biology. But I see this thing happening where people are awakening to these ideas of like, look, man. And I think it's an innate intelligence and maybe it's artificial intelligence combined with innate intelligence, but I see that moving man. and I, I, like, I'm totally inspired by it. Like I, I, I quit my job. Well, I quit my job. If I quit, I mean, I was escorted out by security in front of a lot of people yelling at me. That's how I quit. Right. <laughs> but I, I, I want to, I think that there's a point there. I think that more people should be doing that. You should be getting, and maybe you have to get to a point where you're losing it. Maybe you have to get to a point where you're so mad, you have all this misplaced anger, and you're a horrible person, and then you stop and be like, me, I'm the problem. It's not, it's not Dr. V, it's not my work, it's me. I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> you know, so I, when, when I have talked to a lot of different people, and that is what I see when I talk to people, is the same thing that's happened to me. It's happening to all these other people and it's happening to a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. I spoke to a woman yesterday who was a dentist and mm -hmm. she, she was a dancer first. She had her own dance studio and she was a dentist and you know, she didn't love being a dentist. And all of a sudden she got this crazy problem where like out of nowhere, her hand started cramping up. She's like, Oh my God, I can't be a dentist anymore. And she said it got so bad. She tried to fight it for a year. She would go and get acupuncture and it would help. 
And then one day she was doing like a root canal and her hand cramped up. And I was like, so that's the world telling you, you shouldn't be a dentist. You know what I mean? So I think this is a long winded way of saying what I see happening in the world is us awakening to ourselves, man. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I don't know if that's only us or if that's something that every generation or every past generation always again went through. Mm. You know, are you any saying uh, this is happening? Are you referring to is this something that's happening only now? Like, I, th I, I think it's, I think it has to do with like a, when I look at the population as a body, mm -hmm. the boomer generation is a giant generation and they are dying, a giant part of us is dying and what we are seeing is the manifestation of their unrealized dreams their unrealistic ideas dying with them and these are the death throes of a generation dying and like mm -hmm. a lot of the, the boomers had some great ideas but they also had a lot of dumb ideas and they don't want to let them go and like we are all subject to the ideas of the people in positions of authority and that's what like it, I see like a sh like a shedding of a skin in some ways. And I don't mean to be flippant about a generation of people I love dying, but it's necessary. And so I think that what's happening when I say awaken, I think that there's a new generation of leaders being allowed. Information is now being revealed to them, a passing of the torch on an environmental level that most people can't understand. Hey, we need new leaders and new ideas. And this is a time of our planet giving sentient messaging to people willing to take a chance. The new ideas being born are being given to us right now as the older generation dies. So I think it is a generational thing. There's a great book called The Fourth Turning that talks about what mm -hmm. all these generational cycles that happen. But yeah, I, maybe it does happen every generation, but I think we're to, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's me turning 50. Maybe this is me seeing things, you know? I don't mean projecting it onto the world, but I think so. Mm. What's your take on our, our on our on the world population as a body and the boomers dying? That's what is causing all this chaos. I don't know. I don't know if you know the boomers specifically, George, because yeah, look, I mean, I look at archetypal cosmological okay. cycles, right? Okay. So and then you can see that there is even if in the bigger picture, you can look a hundred thousand years, yeah. you, can, you can see, okay, there's these cycles. There's some cycles that are 400 years or 200 yeah. years and hundred years and so on. And there are certain signatures. Okay. Every generation, you know, has a specific role, specific uh, symbolic energy that they represent, which then shows yeah. itself in their, in their art, in their opinions, in their ideology, the music and so on, so on the, what they believe. Right. And, uh, yeah, but this is going on. This is always going on, right? If you went to the Roman time, you can see the Romans are writing like this generation is now going finally with their old ideas. And now this new generation is coming. They had that same, you know, kind of cycle there, right? Exact same ones, right? So and this is 2000 years ago, right? right. So, um, so yeah, I don't think that it's so, uh, this is anything extremely special about uh, the boomers or Gen Z. Z or X or Melania, whatever the ones that are here right now. Um, but what I do think is, and this is maybe, I don't know if everybody is uh, is on board with this or believes this, but uh, you know, in the spiritual traditions, in the spiritual traditions, there's not just you know a lot of the people who are close to the spiritual traditions. They are now going and being uh, doing a new age thing, and everything is you know everything's. You can mix and match from everywhere, and everything is light and good. It's a kind of a little bit superficial. Sure. And but they're because they're not engaging with the hard parts of the traditions, you know, the kind of the challenging, difficult parts, and the and the ones that are requiring uh, much more than just like a feel good kind of mix and match, right? Because if you look at the tra traditions, they all talk about um, the serious ones. They talk about things going towards a certain uh, great challenge where things get darker, right? Mm -hmm. And if things do get darker towards the end, right? Towards the end. The end is not necessarily, okay, how do I understand? This? Look, in the, whether you call this the Kali Yuga, mm -hmm. in the Indian tradition to call Kali Yuga, or, or you talk about the, the apocalypse, right? 
to Revelation, yeah. so the coming apocalypse, right? Which which we have the book of Revelation, and there's like there's a lot of there's a lot of advice and guidance given to us, right? So the traditions they talk about this coming of the darker age which we're in now, right? Mm -hmm. Look, we're in an age where we just found out that a very large percentage, a, lar a large number of the most powerful people in the world are for years went on some godforsaken island somewhere with the sky, right? And did God knows what there, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and who the list of all these people who are like, these are the best kind of the most, you know, the most kind of accomplished people in society, you know, yeah. These are people who are supposed to be the role models and the yeah. and the leaders and whatnot, and you know, and they're they're part of some kind of, you know, so they're yeah. part of some kind of dark groups, you know. And this is now this is now known, you know. This is not anymore like some conspiracy theory, you know. Right. It's not some right. crazy conspiracy theory. This is known, right? So, so it, that tells me that okay, and not just that. There's many observations like that. There's many, many observations like that. Okay, we're going towards a darker age now. It's a darker age now. It's not a, right? It doesn't, now, there's, how do I interpret it? Does it mean that, okay, oh, well, you have to be scriptural fundamentalist and whatnot. That's not what I'm saying, right? That's not what I'm saying. Right. I'm trying to get a, I'm trying to get a, an interpretation that makes sense in our, yeah. in our age, you know, because I believe that there's, truth in those in those traditions but they need to be understood and interpreted for for today because look you were saying you took yesterday you took uh the mushroom trip and you could see things about the future right right now 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 okay then how can we doubt that there, there were some some prophetic individuals right who 2000 years ago they could see what yeah. 2000 2000 years in the future was going to happen, right? Obviously, when he, when they saw it, they wouldn't put it in the language of, uh, you know, oh, there's going to be this super intelligent AI and it's going to have robots and drones and it's going to have people's brains connected and there's going to be a war between these three superpowers and then it's going to lead to this. They would say it in the words that, you know, make sense in their language, you know, but if you read what they were saying, you know, this is really close to what's happening, where we're going now. You know, this is really cool. It's just put in symbolic language, in the symbolic language that makes, you know, that that, that was their language 2,000 years ago, you know? So where am I going with this? I think that the, the, despite all of these ups and downs of the of the generations, you know, coming generations, coming, going generations, and so on, I think there is this general tendency where we're going towards a time which is going to be more dark and where where the the the, the people who want to work on on creating a a new world or a, a new a mm -hmm. new Eden or a new create a new world where people can be free, right? Yeah. They have to first of all they have to be vigilant because they can be they're going to be tempted all the time. Totally. They can be tempted all the time again and again and again. They need to be vigilant. They can be co-opted and tempted and and be bought up and used and integrated into the systems that are doing the opposite of what they're saying. That's the first thing. And nobody's going to be free of that temptation. Nobody's going to stand mm -hmm. above that. You know, that's one. And and the second thing is they have to probably accept that, okay, it's going to take some time. You're not necessarily right now going to, uh, you know, be the be in the place where, uh, when you're saying seeding these new thoughts and new ideas, okay, it's not necessarily going to be like, oh, okay, now tomorrow comes the great success of the, right. you know, now everybody suddenly is, liberated and you know everybody's experiencing right. you know everybody's experiencing these higher states of consciousness and and overcoming their ego limitations and suddenly we're solving all the world's problems and so on that's not going to happen so soon it's right. probably you know it's probably not it's probably will get worse before it gets better but that doesn't mean that i got to be like the accelerationist and support it you know like cheer be a cheerleader for it you know like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's interesting to think about how much hard work and sacrifice are necessary to get something moving. You know, a lot of the people, a lot of, if you look back at Isaiah, a lot of the prophets, like they look at the book of Job, where this guy had everything taken away from him and still he had faith. You know, when I read that story, I find it inspiring. Like, okay, I'm going to have all this taken away from me and I'm still going to get up 
and still tell my daughter how much I love her and my wife and still put a big smile on my face and tell people how awesome they are in spite of things that are happening to me. Like that's, there's so much power in, in the, in the stories and scriptures in the, in our, and power in our spiritual nature. Like those stories run deep like that hopefully is the code on which more people run their life. Cause that code has been run for a long time. And it, it speaks to the idea of transcendence. You know, I don't know that anything else speaks to the idea of transcendence. It's, it's, it's mesmerizing, man. I love it. Beautiful. Uh, Dr. V, this is incredible. I had such a great conversation. This is so much fun, man. I, if I had more time, we would be talking for another hour and a half, I think. But this is really, really fun. I think that we touched on so many cool things, but at the same time, I think we just scratched the surface, man. I think there's so much more we could talk about and. I'm thankful. I loved, I loved it. It was a beautiful conversation. Thank you so much, George, for facilitating this and being in the flow with <laughs> with uh, with everything that was emerging throughout this, and also for the people that maybe not we didn't maybe respond to every uh, comment. Let's check them out well. real fast. Let's. I got. Are you okay on time? Okay. Let, let's go. I would love to make sure that we we talk to all of everyone who took a time. Everyone who took some moments to hang out with us. I would like to make sure that they get time to over here. So my friend Ben comes back and he says, our perception of what is filtered through our model of what we reason is. If we haven't reasoned our own model, we try others on as the fit needs, like the spiritual wardrobe of life. Q, oh, uh, I don't know what that means in Latin. I know that means something in Latin. You know what that means? No. Q, <laughs> um, seg segue? Yeah, cute segue. Cute se oh, cute segue. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, there we go. I thought it was some sort of Latin term I didn't know about. I'm like, oh man, is that like <laughs> cute segue? I agree. Our perceptions are, um, our perception is is what it's filtered through. And each as an individual, maybe this speaks to the idea of community and worshiping together. Like we only, as an individual, you only have a fragment, right? And when you sit down with somebody, like our conversation today. Or if Ben was here, all three of us could get to share the lens of it. On some level, I just I don't I don't know that an individual could ever have could only have but a piece of the puzzle, right? I think maybe that's that's there's something in there. <laughs> all right, here we go. I know when my loved ones get me thinking about them, they'll call or I'll feel them strongly, and they show up on my front door. I think that is speaking to the idea of the spirit never really leaves. You know, if you really want to call your ancestors, they're there to help you, I think. What's your take on that? Well, 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 can we thank you about them? Yeah, this, I think this was in the context of where we were talking about telepathy because yep. I think Nancy was saying also that she had yep. the, the experience, uh, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it was, yeah. it was the same poster who had said that she had the experience of, of um of you know things that we can't really we can't really uh explain in the and there's so many other there's so many other stories like this you know the you i think the, the experience of you call some somebody calls that you're just thinking about in the moment mm -hmm. that is so widespread yeah. that a lot of people can completely confirm that in their in in their lived experience and evidence and it's it's like uh, you know, if you speak to us, the skeptics, you know, they will say, oh, this is all make believe. You know, this is all like because it happens sometimes, then you kind of you forgot all the times when it didn't happen. You know, when you thought about <laughs> right. calling, it didn't call. Yeah. But it's not, it's not, it's not, that's not how it is. Like, because it's so kind of it's so on point. You know, it's so on point for, for me, at least. You know, yeah. and I know that this is connect. It's got much, much more the 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 kind of cleaner i got my receptors yeah right because as when you're if you're just yeah. kind of full of if your thought imagine if your mental state is really kind of you know you're obstructed by all these very distracting thoughts yeah. and anger all kinds of things and i don't know you never work on yourself you probably don't receive even if it's there out there right yeah so if your receptors get cleaner right if you clean them and you're able to have yeah. so you know for instance if you're able to calm your thoughts in meditation this is very difficult for a lot of people. They cannot calm their thoughts, right? They can't sit down and just switch off completely your thoughts, right? It's super, it's very difficult. From was for me for a long 
for a long time. Mm -hmm. But at some point you learn, you uh, uh, gain the ability of just switching off completely your thoughts, right? Yeah. Being completely silent. That's actually a, a, a step towards towards cleaning your, what I just called the receptors, right? Because you don't having these distraction signals anymore, noise. The noise is not there anymore. It's kind of on the signal. There's things that's just there. You don't, you don't want it. It's just there, right? Yeah. So once that dies down, I think these experiences get so yeah. much more evident and so much more often they happen yeah. that, you know, there's no way for you to, to discard that evidence. I mean, you know, it's, it's just crystal clear. Mm -hmm. right? And then there's also examples of that are, that are far more, uh, you know, far more specific, you know, like my mother has sort of several times she has dreamt things. And then the next day she said, you know, I dreamt you did this. I'm like, okay, do you have some CCTV cameras here? <laughs> like, you know, it's like, how do you know? You, you know? I dreamt you did this, you know, like, yeah. I know, okay, I just did yeah. it. It's true, you know, and, <laughs> but, you know, that's like way too specific, you know, yeah. like way too specific. Yep. For, you know, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, it's, I love the idea of the noise versus the signal. Like you have to quiet the noise so you can hear the signal. And it's difficult to know how to get rid of the noise, right? I and mean, there's there's distractions all around you so that you don't hear the signal. Look at this thing. Look at this. Got some, this over here. You got that over there. Like on some level, you know, the, the there's a lot of competition for the real estate between your ears and the signal and the noise right there. What else do we got here? We got um, why do – Okay, this is a pretty interesting. One. Why do animals understand our feelings? For for there's a great uh, researcher called Rupert Sheldrake, and he speaks about morphic fields. And he he's done this particular experiment that is repeatable, where dogs tend to wait at the door 20 minutes or something before their owner comes home. You know, like people that put cameras there, and the dogs just just wait for them. Even my cats too. Like my cats know. Like, how do they know that? And then, again, the skeptics are like, well, they don't know. They're just hungry or it's their instincts. But Rupert Sheldrake, in my opinion, has really proven that there is a form of communication in morphic fields that some of us can touch into. Probably all of us can if you clean the receptors. But what's your take on how do under animals understand our feelings? I have to admit, I'm not, I can't uh, give any firsthand uh, insights on this. I never had a pet. So, and I want to change this. My, my wife, on the other hand, she had, before she grew up in a household with, I think, 14 dogs, 15 dogs. Wow. 15 dogs. And, and, and she's, she keeps telling me that, you know, no, this is a good, and I, now I've come around to this. So we, we want, we're, going, we're going to get a dog. So, but we're going to start with one, but, uh, but maybe two of us, you know, let's, let's know where, let's see where that goes. But yeah, I, this is actually a, uh, a very profound i've had i've had connections with, yeah. with with animals before but i think it's still different if it's your pet right? yeah it's your pet because then they develop such a strong bond with you and yeah. even a spiritual link with you but again i can't talk too much on that yet <laughs> yeah it's interesting i think that on some level i think we're all part of nature and so yeah Why? nice yeah. all right i got um I got a, there's so many awesome, man, there's so many. First off, thank you to everybody for commenting right here. I, I find myself at a pinch though, because I, I have to, I got to wrap it up, man. But there's so many comments. I, thank you good. to everybody. There's so many wrap great ones, man. It's good. It's a good, it's a good, good thought. It is. Yeah. It is. I'm super thankful, Dr. P. But before I let you go, where can hey. people find you? What do you have coming up and what are you excited about? I got uh, a lot of things coming up, but. Uh, I don't want to too much dwell too much on it, but find me. Actually, I have. I'm just relaunching my my socials. They're not really very active, but you can find me the real Doctor V. They're going to be all the real Doctor V. YouTube, nice. the real Doctor V. I'm just relaunching that right now. So there's going to be a lot of content on there, and you can see what I'm doing. I got a lot of things. This would be a whole nother podcast now for what I've got <laughs> coming up. I got a book coming up and the and the and the and the new venture and 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 some new content that I'm creating. But yeah, I think that's I gotta leave it at that. <laughs> right. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Ben, yeah. Nancy, Jeff, everybody, thank you so much for chiming in today. We really appreciate it. Go down to the links, check out Dr. V on LinkedIn. That'll be down there. Reach out to him. Incredible individual, really fun to talk to. I'm sure he'll be back and we'll be having longer conversations. That's all we got for today. Enjoy your weekend. 
check out your spirituality, live your best life, become the most authentic version of yourself, and the world will reward you. Hang on, Dr. V, briefly afterwards. Everybody else, I love you. Aloha. Hmm.